This week, wanderlust. We all know that food, shelter, and clothing are the basic human needs that drive every economy. So of course, consumer demand has remained pretty strong in each of those areas, even during the pandemic. But transportation is a basic need too, and it's also a pretty powerful human desire. Even as the pandemic sticks around longer than we hoped, people are traveling more than you probably think, and the resurgence of travel is just getting started. Is now the time to refocus and reinvest in travel? In this edition of Commerce Code, Catching the Travel Wave with Collinson Value Dynamics and Travel.Win. Dan Carell here, and this is Commerce Code brought to you by DCA, the Digital Commerce Alliance. Thanks for joining us for 15 minutes of insight into the evolving world of digital commerce. The global tourism industry reached its historic revenue peak in 2019 at an estimated $1.86 trillion. In 2020, the year of lockdowns and quarantines, it fell precipitously, but maybe not as much as you think. Consumers still spent just over a trillion dollars on tourism, even in that year of going nowhere. And in 2021, that number is expected to climb to $1.3 trillion. During the pandemic, travelers stayed closer to home. They flew less. And they changed some of their activities, but they didn't stop traveling. And as for flying, yes, travelers flew less, particularly on international routes. But something surprising happened in U.S. airports on August 29th, 2021. On that day, the Transportation Security Administration airport security checkpoints cleared just over 1.9 million passengers through to their gates. And for the first time since the start of the pandemic, that number was bigger than the number cleared on the same date in 2019 before any of us had even heard of an N95 mask. So people have a basic need to travel, but we've also got a basic desire to travel. We all know the German word for it, wanderlust. The part of each of us that wants to be home is in tension with the part of us that wants to move and explore. And while we're mentioning Germanic words, you've probably heard someone use the term Godspeed as a sort of good wish or blessing at the start of a trip. I'm no linguist, but I can still use a dictionary. I've got one made out of paper. My kids refuse to use it, I guess, because of Google. Um, but in that dictionary, it says that speed is an old English term for prosperity. And the blessing Godspeed has always been a way to wish success and prosperity upon someone's journey. And here I always thought it had something to do with going fast. Well, all of this is good background for today's Commerce Code conversation. Collinson Value Dynamics and Travel.Win have chosen 2021 of all years to prosper together on a journey towards a travel-focused offering. They're aiming to catch the building travel wave like a surfer off the north shore of Oahu by providing travel-related cashback offers to financial institution customers through the Value Dynamics Marketplace. Today on the show, we're joined by Ed Wogan, the SVP and Chief Merchant Officer of Collinson Value Dynamics US, and Ted Mooney, the founder and CEO of Travel.Win. Ed and Ted, it is such a pleasure to have you back on Commerce Code. Uh, Where are you joining us from today? Yeah, hello, Dan. I am joining you from beautiful downtown Boston today. It's a bright, sunny day here, but it is starting to look like fall in New England. Great. So Ed's in Boston. Ted, where are you? I'm in uh, Port Lauderdale, Florida, and another beautiful day down here, so no complaints. So since the last time uh, you gentlemen joined us on Commerce Code, the world has really experienced some bumps in the road to recovery, most recently, of course, with the Delta variant. How has this affected what you're seeing with both travel and with loyalty programs in general? It certainly has been a bit of a bumpy ride for many. We're seeing what we perceive to be some short-term improvements in trends in travel, loyalty, and consumer behavior. It's really difficult to identify what the new normal demand patterns are going to look like. However, the landscape does show some signs of recent improvement. So the International Air Transport Association announced that both international and domestic travel demand showed significant improvement and momentum in July 2021, but demand remained far below pre-pandemic levels. Extensive government-imposed travel restrictions continue to delay recovery in international markets. Domestic travel was back to 85% of pre-crisis levels, but international demand has only recovered just over a quarter of 2020. 2019 volumes. People traveled where they could, and that was primarily within their own domestic markets. 
A recovery of international travel needs government to restore the freedom to travel freely. That would go a long way to reconnecting the world and reviving the travel and tourism sectors. Given the hesitancy we're seeing with travel on both the professional and the leisure fronts, is now the right time to introduce a travel element to the value dynamics marketplace? Well, Dan, we get that question a lot. We believe there is momentum building for both travel rewards, and we're planning for the future. In a recent survey by the GBTA, when travel buyers and procurement professionals were asked how company travel spend had changed, over half reported that company spending increased somewhat to a lot. Total demand for air travel in July 2021 was down 53.1%. This is a significant improvement from June when demand was 60% below June 2019 levels. International demand in July was 73.6% below July 2019, but better than the 80.9% decline recorded in June 2021 versus two years ago. As the data confirms, demand from consumers for travel and rewards are on the upswing, and we are building for the future. That is why having a great partner like the Travel.Win team is so important. Our combined capabilities, expanding distribution network, and the focus on an exemplary or user experience all demand that we have a compelling and relevant value proposition. Working closely with Travel.Win, we're excited to be building a best-in-class consumer experience. That's such interesting stuff. Ted, what are you seeing with travel? And, and in particular, how did it go over the summer now that we're into September and looking back? And, and what trends are emerging, do you think, through the end of the year? From a travel at win perspective, we started to see month over month growth starting in May of this past year. But by far the biggest impact that we're seeing is that the booking window is shrinking considerably. We're seeing customers book over 50% of their travel within one day of arrival. And we normally see that around 35 to 40%. In addition, we're seeing 90% of travel booked within 30 days of arrival. Normally we see that around 70%. So at the end of the day, this is indicating that consumers are waiting to the last minute to book travel. Obviously, to see what's happening around them and particular in the destination that they're going to. People have asked me multiple times, you know, what will it look like going into the future? And, you know, right now, that's a real tough question to answer. But at this particular point in time, this is becoming the new norm. And until we start to see the COVID numbers turning down, I believe this will remain constant. A question to both of you, as you think about the end user, the traveler, what value is this bringing to them? So there's the obvious cash back element, but what else? From Collinson's perspective, we are optimistic that travel is back and the time to promote new solutions is now. We know that travel offers drive, customer engagement, and loyalty, that consumers remain deal-seeking, and we feel collectively we bring solutions that are relevant and meaningful. The Travel.Win Collinson Value Dynamics user experience is designed to be frictionless. Ted, can you share some perspective? Thanks, Ed. Yeah. So loyalty plans, they've been a part of the travel industry for you know quite some time. And if you take a look at some of the recent research in market, you're going to find some interesting things. So for example, Hello World, 82% of their respondents, you know, they mentioned that they enjoy loyalty programs, the value of the rewards that they get. And in another study by Wirecard, 75% of the customers said they're likely to make another purchase after receiving an incentive. So when you look at the combination of Collinson and Travel Out Win, you know, we're providing exactly what the consumer is looking for. It's very simple, it's hassle free for the consumer, and we do it in three easy steps. They go ahead, they book their hotels like they normally would, and they could receive up to 30% cash back on that hotel. When in destination, they're going to receive anywhere from 5 to 10% cash back on the card linked offers. And after travel, they're going to see the cash back put back onto the card that they booked the travel with. So again, we're taking the complexity out of the equation and making it hassle-free for the consumer. So why is your joint philosophy important and why do you think that matters? Sure, Dan. As you know, we have a strategic partnership with NCR, distributing meaningful content and a relevant solution to their bank and credit unions, and ultimately to their bank consumers. Travel.Win and Collinson Value Dynamics power the My Rewards user experience, delivering offers and rewards to millions of consumers throughout the U.S. We believe we are adding value, eliminating barriers, and delivering a seamless and meaningful consumer experience that they can't get anywhere else, which is our point of differentiation. Ted, what do you think? 
I couldn't agree more with you, Ed. This comes down to providing consumers with the best offer at the right time and educating them as to what's available in the destination they're traveling to. As mentioned before, travel loyalty programs have been around for a long time. However, when you combine the unique offering we have with the cash back on the hotels and the card linked offers, it's a pretty unique proposition. So as a consumer, they will see hotel offers from about 750,000 hotels worldwide. The unique proposition we bring to the table is we're sharing the majority of that commission earned back to the end consumer. We've negotiated with some of the top travel providers in the space, including Priceline, Expedia, and over another 10 different wholesalers that we have access to. So Travel.Win and Value Dynamics provide the consumer with rich content that's meaningful to them and at the same time, easy to redeem. So it's a win-win all the way around. Ed and Ted, it's been a pleasure to have you on and just a fascinating conversation about some great work that you're doing. Uh, So I wanted to thank you for taking the time and joining us today on Commerce Code. It was really terrific to connect with you today. Really enjoyed the conversation and let's keep on traveling. Thanks, Dan. Really appreciate the conversation uh, today. And my quote these days is travel is the new gold rush. So let's get everybody traveling again. Great. Thanks, gentlemen. Coming right up. Closing thoughts on the future of travel. For some reason, the best part of every family trip for our children was the moment we opened the door to our hotel room. It was like cracking the seal on a new toy. They ran in to explore the new space, and I don't think there was ever a time when it didn't end up with two kids jumping back and forth between queen beds or dislodging at least a few couch cushions while assessing how bouncy it was. Then came the search for the pool. My guess is that I've been in around a thousand hotel rooms in my life, and while I don't usually jump on the beds, at least not anymore, I have to say I still feel a little of that joy when I open the door to a perfectly prepared hotel room. I also love the smell of airplanes, and I might need counseling for that, but I'm sticking by my love for the perfectly prepared hotel room. Of course, the family trip and the joyful exploration of some hotel room in Florida or Canada or Europe were often courtesy of travel reward programs. And that brings us back to today's conversation. We're all in a complex industry, and we use a lot of shorthand that consumers would never understand, and surely they'd never want to, to describe the structures that we need to put in place in order to make their experiences tailored and easy and affordable. So the Collins and Travel.Win partnership is actually complex on the back end, of course, and that's what this podcast is for, to unpack that stuff for industry professionals. But the goal isn't complicated. The goal is to get kids jumping on hotel beds again. Travel's a thing we need to do but it's also a thing we want to do. When two grade schoolers walk run down that long hallway in search of the pool, that's their wonder list. That's two Marco Polos heading off to chart the Silk Road. Whether or not our work directly touches the travel industry, we're all working hard right now to achieve the same thing, to adapt and evolve the complex system under the hood of the consumer economy that gets business travelers moving again, that gets kids not quite running around the corners of a hotel pool, and gets doors swinging open to the look and feel of a perfectly prepared room. As a guy who very much looks forward to all of that, I thank you for your work, just as I thank those who maintain the airplanes and work tirelessly to ensure that those queen beds are made perfectly and the pillows are set just so, at least until my kids get to them. To find out more about the latest trends in digital commerce and digital advertising, check out our website, www.digcomall.org. That's D-I-G-C-O-M-A-L-L.org. For the Digital Commerce Alliance, take care of yourself and take care of each other. Godspeed in your travels. This is Dan Carell, signing off.